a project was let to rehabilitate the existing bridge deck and improve the service life and the rideability of the structure. So this was a very large bridge. It's uh, four lanes over a thousand foot in length and due to being in downtown Nashville, a lot of traffic in the area and uh, all this construction needed to be completed over the course of four weekend closures. So it's a really impressive project to get done in such a short period of time. And because of that rapid construction schedule, this is the perfect opportunity to use a very early strength latex modified concrete overlay. Or in Tennessee, they call it PMC. It's uh, polymer modified concrete. It's the same mix, just a different notation for it. But this was actually the first VES PMC in Tennessee's history. So before I get into the presentation, I know many of you have seen slides like this, but I just want to give a little, real brief rundown about hydro demolition and the latex overlays. And what these two technologies are for is bridge deck preservation. So we always say you build a bridge from the ground up, but you have to repair it from the top down. So obviously the first thing that you're going to be seeing is uh, issues with the deck and the wearing surface. So that's what we were looking to fix during this project. And these two technologies, they've been used for over 60 years. Uh, not many other products can say that they've been, had this much long-term success in proven um, extension of the service life for the bridge decks. So for those of you not familiar with hydro demolition, it's a mechanical process where you utilize a very high pressure water jet in order to uh, remove deteriorated concrete from the structure. So what happens is this high pressure jet, it rapidly erodes all the cement matrix in between the aggregates and it washes away all that loose material. And what makes hydro demolition so uh, perfect for these overlay projects is that not only do you um, remove concrete of a uniform strength down to a set depth, but in that same pass in the machine movements, you actually wash away any deteriorated material in just one pass of the robot. And that's what we call selective removal. So here's a brief drawing just kind of showing um, the selective removal aspects of hydro demolition. So as you'll see a little later on, first step of this process is to use mechanical milling or scarification to remove the top layer of concrete. This gives you a nice uniform structure and it's a lot more cost effective to cut with depth using mechanical milling. So that's why we almost always do it prior to hydro demolition. Next you see, um, the next step is to use hydro demolition, which removes an additional thin layer of concrete in areas where you have good sound material, but then also you get that selective removal in areas where you have a lot more deteriorated or um, compromised concrete, because you do not want to put an overlay on bad concrete that's just going to be prone to premature failure. So here's a photo of a real life application of what I just talked about. This is a calibration test patch that we do on every project to make sure we are tuned in for the specific bridge deck that we're working on. So you can see where um, in like the top corner there where it says calibration and everything around, that's the milled surface. And in the sound area, this is what you want to see. You can see just how much more surface area is exposed using hydro demolition than compared to a mechanically milled surface. And that extra surface area gives an increased bond which increases the life of the overlay. And then in the unsound area, you see a lot more exposed rebar. So this is showing where the deteriorated concrete was selectively removed in just that area. So the second technology we'll be talking about is latex modified concrete. As I mentioned before, this is a product that was developed in the 1960s. It's been used for over 60 years now. And it's a structural overlay that has uh, been proven to extend the service life of a bridge deck by over 25 years. What makes latex modified concrete a very great overlay material? It's very adhesive. It develops a great bond strength with the existing bridge deck, especially when used on a hydro demolished surface. And one of the things that's very important is it shields the underlying deck because it's a very impervious material. And I'll talk about that a little later on. Um, but LMC also has a great flexural strength due to the latex admixture. And it's very wear resistant and improves the skin resistance of the bridge. So there's three main types of latex concrete that we typically work with. You have your standard type one mix. It's about a four day cure, a two day wet cure, two day dry. Um, and then you have a type three mix, which cuts that curing time in half down to 48 hours of total cure time. And then you have your rapid set mix, which was used on this project. This is using, uh, very often we use CTS Cement. They're another membership organization within the Southeast Preservation. They have a booth here as well. So if you'd like more information about that, feel free to give them a stop by their booth. But what's really unique about this material is that it sets in only three hours before it's traffic ready. Um, you get 2,500 PSI 
um, in just three hours, and then an ultimate strength of around 6,000 PSI. So it's a great material for nightly or weekend closures. Then what makes you, uh, latex truly unique is this latex emulsion that is included into the mix design. It has these tiny styrene butadiene polymer particles. They're very water resistant. And what happens is when they come into contact with each other, they fuse together. Um, this creates a waterproof film that goes over the entire concrete overlay. And then as the water is being removed what, during the curing process, this polymer film stays in place and it essentially waterproofs the concrete. So it's very impervious and uh, prevents the infiltration of chlorides further into the bridge deck. And the other unique part about latex modified concrete is that it's actually batched on site using a volumetric mixer. So this is a photo you see here. You have all your bins for all your materials, your coarse, your fine aggregates, your cement, uh, water, and then you also would have a tank up front for the latex emulsion. And these are all fed to the hopper at the back of the machine to meet the correct mix design for the project. So onto the bridge deck project that we were going to be focusing on. Um, as you can see here, you have a very large structure. Like I said, it was over 1,000 foot in length, the Andrew B. Gibson Bridge. It's located just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And it was, you can see how impressive it was to complete such a large structure in just four weekend closures. So once we were able to take a little closer look at the bridge deck, you can see that there was a lot of these pop-outs and delaminated areas. It was a great candidate for a rehabilitation using hydro demolition and a latex modified concrete overlay. And one more really unique thing about this project was how we actually supplied water. Um, there was a fire, no fire hydrants near the bridge, but we were over the Cumberland River. And because it's such a large project, we needed a large amount of water, it was more cost effective to actually pump water out of the river using these high pressure pumps that you can see here. You pump the water, you filter it, and then we ran a line up to the bridge deck and we were able to supply the hydro demolition operation, um, the cleanup and dust control, uh, yeah, like the dust control for the milling, and then also for the cleanup with our vacuum trucks. So as you can see here, we had a hose bracketed onto the barrier wall, and then you had these tees every few hundred feet, which really helped make this a very productive uh, project, which is important on this short closure period. So moving on to the construction, as I mentioned before, it was a simple weekend closure. We had to open, or we were allowed to take one lane every weekend starting around 9 p.m. And then we had to have the uh, bridge back open to traffic by 5 a.m. Monday morning, or you would be incurring some pretty heavy liquidated damages. So this first photo here, this was taken right at 9 o'clock as they're starting to shift traffic over and set up the work zone. And then the first step that we did was we actually went out there with a pachometer, which is a rebar locator. And this is an important step. It uh, gives you an approximate depth of the rebar within the concrete slab so that you could get as close to the rebar as possible while also minimizing the amount of rebar that would be damaged due to the mechanical milling. So here's a photo of one of the milling machines that we used on the project. As I mentioned before, it's very cost effective to use milling to remove the top inch of concrete. In this case, we used uh, one inch milling and then a half inch of hydro demolition to get the required depth of the overlay. So the milling is very efficient. You load all the debris right into a dump truck. I'm sure many of you have seen on bridge decks before. And what happens is you remove that top inch of concrete and you really open up the deck, all the pores and imperfections in the deck to hydro demolition so that you can more effectively get in there and remove the deteriorated concrete. So the milling, um, it usually ran for about three to four hours. So we would be wrapping up around midnight on Saturday, starting every night, and then we'd begin to set up for the hydro demolition operation. So here you can see one of our hydro demolition robots. And if we go on to the next photo, you can see we actually had multiple units on this project because it was such a large quantity that needed to be completed in such a short period of time. So we were able to set up our uh, hydro demolition robots in such a way that they just made one pass down the entire bridge deck without needing to pull up at all, which really made it a very efficient job and we were able to get a large quantity in such a short period of time. So the hydro demolition would run for, um, it took about nine hours to finish up the bridge deck. Um, and then come Saturday morning, you can see here that we have demolished a good portion of the deck. Um, here's some of the photos. Now, this one on the left is really cool. Um, 
the left-hand side there is the milled surface, and just next to it is the hydro-demolished surface. And you can see just how much, again, more surface area is exposed. And then on the photo on the right, you see some exposed rebar where you're showing where the deteriorated concrete was selectively removed in just this area. So after the hydro demolition process, the next important step is to make sure the bridge deck is cleaned of all concrete debris and the slurry water. Um, it's very important to get that taken care of as soon as possible because if left in place, it would be prone to premature failure in the new overlay. So we have our specialty vacuum trucks here. Uh, here's a zoom in of one of the sleds that has the vacuum tube, and this does a really great job of taking up all that concrete and um, loose material from the bridge deck. And that photo on the right, that's just after the vac truck, you can see just how effective these are at cleaning the bridge deck. And it really gives it a great surface for that new overlay to bond to. Um, and the next step of the cleanup operation, uh, in Tennessee they require a 10,000 PSI pressure wash to be done, and this helps again clean the deck. And also, it uh, leaves the deck in a very saturated surface dry condition. This is a very important step for latex modified concrete. I know some of like the um, epoxies and polymers, it has to be a very dry bridge deck, but it's the opposite with latex. You want to have that surface wet, that way the overlay doesn't, or the uh, underlying bridge deck doesn't suck moisture out of the overlay, which leads to some surface cracking. So after the bridge deck has been thoroughly cleaned and water blasted, you can set up your plastic sheeting. Uh, helps again keep, keep the bridge deck clean. And then you can set up your finishing machine. Uh, you can see in the top right corner here at the uh, low end of the bridge deck. As I mentioned before, we have our mobile volumetric mixers on site, which is batching all the overlay material right there. Um, in our nearby laydown yard, you have your fine aggregates, your coarse aggregates, um, all your water, your cement pigs, and the latex emulsion. So the trucks are able to cycle and load up the, um, <coughs> the hoppers in the volumetric mixer for each pour that they make. So the DOT, um, they took many samples. You can see in the top left, or the top on the left-hand side there, they did their slump test, and they also took a bunch of cores, which would be used for cylinder breaks. And then on the right-hand side there, you have your yield test. So this is um, used, this is a quarter cubic yard test box here. And what you want to see is you, the, or the volumetric mixers, they're counting off how much material goes on the bridge deck, and you want to see that it matches what's actually going on so that you're not overpaying for the material. And then once you get all the testing complete, you can start your latex pour on the bridge deck. You can see here on the left-hand side, the latex concrete goes directly on the hydro-demolished surface. There's no need for any grout coat or any kind of prime coat in order to increase the bond. It's going to bond great on its own. And you can see the crew members are starting to rake it into place for the finishing machine. There's another photo. You can see many of these concrete pours. You have a lot of man in there making sure that you're getting all the air pockets out. Um, you don't have any big balls of material, and that's also helped by the finishing machine. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with these. You have your auger at the front. Um, this helps mix up the material, gives it a nice uniform consistency. Then you have your vibratory rollers, which are placing material at the correct grade and thickness to mix, mix, sorry, match the existing slope of the roadway. And then you have your pan drag and your wet burlap drag, which give it that nice, smooth, rideable surface. This next photo here, you can see um, this contractor, they did a really good job of keeping the burlap on, and this is used for curing. You need to have very soaked burlap go on top of the latex to help ensure that it does not dry out. And then also, you're placing plastic on top of the burlap to act as an additional evaporation shield. And um, it's a very important step that will often go overlooked. And it's something that we really harp on, because if you do proper curing, you're going to have a very less likelihood of any surface cracking. And uh, especially when using a rapid set material such as VES, it dries out very quickly. So this was uh, the beginning of the pour, and then by next morning, you can see that they've reached the other end of the bridge deck. So it's about Sunday morning, around 8 a.m. You see they're doing their very final pour. They got their burlap and plastic sheeting on top. But then from the same point, if you look down, you actually see they've begun to take the burlap and the plastic off because this material sets up so quickly, it is fully cured at this point. 
And then on the right-hand side there, you can see after the bridge deck has been cleaned and grooved, you have a very nice smooth riding surface that's going to last for over 25 years with minimal maintenance required during that time. Then this final slide here, you can see on the right-hand side, you have your new LMC overlay. And on the left, you're completing your next phase of construction. And after only four weekends, we had this bridge completely rehabilitated. So here's a slide I just wanted to include. It shows how cost-effective of a product this can be. These are the actual bid tabs used on the project, taken from the Tennessee DOT website. The hydro demolition line item that includes cost for the milling, the water supply, the hydro demolition, and for the cleanup operation. And then with your PMC overlay line item that includes the material supply, the batching, the placement, the finishing, and the curing. So we really don't try to hide any costs. We are really want to work with you to give you a great product. And you can see here it's very cost effective and long lasting. And real quick, it's not really left. Okay, this is a short video that we had produced about the project. It's got a lot of really cool drone footage, so please enjoy. Latex modified concrete overlays have been used for over 50 years all throughout the United States to add years of service life to an aging bridge deck asset. These LMC materials are 100% American made and can be installed by local American contractors. And when properly placed on a bridge deck such as this, latex modified concrete overlays are proven to add over 25 years of service life.
regarding the um the grooving machine how long after you actually place the the lmc product did they put the grooving machine out to groove the deck itself um i'm not sure exactly when they did it um but it was that same weekend and it should be ready after that three hours that it's allowed to cure you will be able to have the grooving machine okay my second question is in terms of vibration from i noticed that you know you had the temporary barrier and then traffic was mm -hmm. on one side was there any sort of like micro cracking or anything like that in the product due to vibration of the bridge during placement? No, that's not something that we typically worry about. Um, on large structures such as that, the bridges are very, you know, they're in good condition. The vibrations are going to be minimal in how it affects anything. Oh, real quick, uh, uh, just during the weekend, how much of a square yard is of LMC overlay you guys could do? At max? Um, I mean, it, it's going to depend on some things. If you want to stop by the booth, we can have a discussion about it. Okay, yeah. sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, let's go. Let's go quick. Yeah. Uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.